Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing very well today. So, you may have noticed that I have taken a couple of weeks break from YouTube. Um, two reasons. Number one, we went up north to see my family in the Lake District for my birthday, which was a week before last. Um, we were going to film a vlog, but we were just taken in seeing family and it was nice just to take a bit of a break. And two, I have been thinking of other video ideas um, to put on the channel because at the minute it's just mine and Teddy's monthly updates. So if there are any videos you would like to see from me, then please put them in the comments and I will certainly have a look. Another big milestone, we hit... 100 subscribers! Woo 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 woo! Um, that was actually a big thing for me. We're all, like, it's still, we're still a very small channel, but the fact that we've reached out to like 100 people is insane to me. I didn't think the channel would grow that much. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please 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 subscribe that would be an amazing help if you like our content and if you have already subscribed thank you you're the reason that I do what I do um, I'm a stay-at-home mom but this is kind of like my hobby on the side and you guys make it all that much more worth it so this is gonna be a slightly new video as I said I am looking at other content to put out to you guys so I thought I would start kind of like a weekly series called things I wish I knew Thursday. Thursday is probably our most common upload day whenever we have uploaded um, so I thought I would try my best to make it a weekly thing. If there are any topics you want me to cover in this kind of series I guess then again leave those down in the comments as well um, and I'll see if I can cover them. There may be certain topics I can't cover that could be due to personal choice or it could be that we haven't experienced anything like that. So for example, if someone said, oh, can you talk about things that you wish you knew before buying a house? Um, we haven't bought a house, we've never bought a house, and we probably won't be for the foreseeable future just yet. So I won't be able to cover topics like that. So today I am going to be talking about things I wish I knew about labour and delivery. It's been a long time since I've talked about labour and delivery. I gave birth almost a year ago. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. So there are certain things that I don't really remember, but there's definitely a lot that is ingrained in my mind and will be for a long time. So I have 10 reasons written down on my phone here. So let's jump right into it. A thing I wish I knew, number one, how much discomfort and pain you actually feel during contractions. This was my first baby and I had no idea what a full-blown full-term contraction would feel like. Um, I knew what Braxton Hicks felt like because I'd gotten quite a lot um, but I didn't know the difference between kind of a Braxton Hicks and a full-blown you're giving birth kind of contraction. It hurts. <laughs> um, I asked my mum what it felt like and she said it feels like really bad period cramps. I think she was trying, I think she said that just to not scare me because when I asked her after I'd given birth she said yeah it's a lot worse than period cramps. Um, there is waves of pain but when you're in full-blown established labour you feel like you can't get a break and it's just constant pain and you just feel like your stomach's constantly tight. Some women go through labour and they just feel discomfort, they don't really feel any pain. Whereas there's other women who feel moderate pain and there's other women again who feel a lot of pain, like myself. I do not have very high pain tolerance, I cannot handle pain. So these contractions were a big deal for me. <laughs> Number two is the transition phase. Um, let me just look it up here. Because I can't remember when the transition phase starts. Here we go. The transitional stage is described as the most painful part of labour as your body is changing from the cervix opening to the body getting ready for the pushing stage. 
women often experience transitional stage around 7 to 10 centimetres dilated. I think I remember going through the transition phase between 6 and 7 centimetres because I was really, really losing control at that point. Like, I was flinging my head around with the gas, I had the gas and air. By the point I had reached the transitional stage, I was on the gas and air and I'd had a pethidine injection and I was still in agony and I just felt like I was losing control. I felt like I was literally going crazy. I thought, I can't do this. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, get this baby out. And I think if you speak to a woman who has had a pretty long labour, I think the transition phase is the worst because you're just tired at that point and you just think, I want this baby out. But I didn't think how bad it would actually be. I didn't think I would have Tom on one side and the midwife on the other both telling me, like, look, you need to get back in control of this situation. Because at that point, Theodore's heart rate was dropping when I was having every contraction. So me being stressed was putting more stress on him. Um, so you really do have to kind of work through that. It seems like it's never going to end at that point, but I promise you it will. Number three is how much blood you can actually lose um, during delivery. I think I lost about 420 millilitres of blood. Um, I think it was around that. It's in my hospital notes, but they're in Tom's studio and I can't be bothered to go and get them. <laughs> I lost just under half a litre of blood. I know 420 mils doesn't sound like a lot, but when you see it on the pad things that they put underneath you while you're giving birth, is it looks like a lot of blood. Um, and then obviously you have the subsequent blood loss for the few weeks after. I didn't realise that lasted for as long as it did. I thought it was maybe a couple of weeks and then that was it. I think my bleeding lasted for about six weeks. This is going to be a very TMI point but you are going to pass like masses and you're going to pass bloody matter and things like that. It's all normal, it's just your body ejecting everything out as part of giving birth and that might not happen until a few days after but it's all normal and you don't need to panic. Number four, even with an epidural, the ring of fire or crowning, as it's more commonly known, is still very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, that's the part of pushing that I was terrified about. I thought, it's going to absolutely kill me. <laughs> um, but looking back, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was still very, very uncomfortable because even though you're numb from the waist down, you can still feel a lot of pressure and you can feel yourself stretch. So that was very uncomfortable to say the least so it was when the head crowned and the shoulders that was the worst part for me but I knew that after the shoulders came out I only needed to do one or two more pushes and then he would have been out so that was kind of my motivation to work through that pain. Number five now I thought that people were joking when they said this to me people who I know who have had babies how how the pain just instantly stops once you've had your baby. As soon as your baby comes out, that's it. It's no more pain. Like, no more labour pain anyways. <laughs> and obviously, once your baby's born, you release all these endorphins, all these happy hormones. And everything just kind of stops and time kind of stands still while you look at your baby. And... That just makes all the pain go away and that is true everything just stops and the pain stops time stops everything stops um, and it is an amazing feeling number six midwives can intervene and midwives are there to give you their personal opinion because you are in their care and they are there to give you the best care possible so it was actually my midwife working with Tom they were kind of communicating with one another because Tom was my advocate at that point I was in so much pain I couldn't speak I felt like I couldn't breathe um, so I remember being on the gas and air having my eyes shut 
but the midwife saying to Tom, like, look, I think she needs an epidural now. I think it's getting to the point where she's losing too much control and she needs to calm down. But at that point, I couldn't calm down because I was in so much pain. So the midwife actually intervened with her advice and actually recommended an epidural. They usually don't recommend epidurals because it can slow down the labour process. But by that point, I was in so much pain. The, mid the midwife said, right, we are going to get you an epidural now. Now, I was just like, okay, do whatever you want as long as it makes the pain go away. So yeah, our midwife was absolutely amazing. She saw what would be best for me and she was absolutely amazing and Tom was as well because he, again he was my voice when I didn't have one. If you have your birthing partner coming with you into that delivery room make sure talk it down with them and say I need you to be my advocate and my voice because I might be in too much pain to talk and Tom did that with our midwife and I'm so so glad he did. Seven Linking into the last point, I did not realise how long-winded the epidural process is while you're in labour. Um, I had had spinal anaesthetic before for my cervical cerclage procedure. If you want to watch that, I'll put that in the iCard. Um, and that took maybe about five, ten minutes. Um, they had to do it twice because of a complication with the first kind of round. But the second time round, the, the anaesthetist got it in fine. Um, but this time, they can't give you the epidural while you're having a contraction. Because I would, you have to like kind of hunch your back forwards, so it's kind of curved like that. But every time I was having a contraction, I was arching my back like this. Because the only kind of relief I got was when I arched my back and kind of lifted my bum up off the surface of the bed. Um, so I was kind of like hovering and obviously they can't do that, they can't administer an epidural like that. So they had to wait between every single contraction before they could do the next part of the procedure. So I think all in all, to me it felt like an eternity because I was in so much pain from the contractions and now I was having a needle shoved into my back. like. So I had Tom holding one leg and the midwife holding the other leg, trying to like keep me calm, talk me through it, you know, because I was a mess at that point. I just needed the pain to stop. So be prepared for it to be quite long-winded. If you're having very painful contractions and you feel like you're losing a bit of control, just, you know, have someone with you that will calm you down but be prepared for it to take a bit longer than it normally would. Eight, I had no idea that you would get contractions after you've had your baby, especially if you are breastfeeding. Um, we breastfed for five days and in those five days, the afterbirth contractions that I had were insane. <laughs> I started having them and I thought, what the hell's happening? I know I'm not pregnant with twins, why am I having contractions again and it wasn't until one of the award midwives explained to me like because of all the hormones when your baby latches and starts breastfeeding it encourages the uterus to shrink back to its normal size and that's why you get more contractions and they were intense like after maybe the second day they weren't as bad but even after we stopped breastfeeding I would still get the occasional one and I'd be like, oh, that kind of hurts. Um, but then they stopped after about six weeks, I want to say. They completely stopped after about six weeks. Number nine, the pain you feel down there after you have given birth. Once all the pain medication has worn off, it is absolutely insane the amount of pain that I felt. One thing I wish I had done was made like afterbirth like sanitary towels. I think there's a hack where you put like witch hazel oil and aloe vera gel and things like that and then put it in the freezer. I don't have anything like that and I really wish I did. I had a second degree tear and I had to have stitches and that was 
that was very painful. I didn't feel the stitches actually going in, but it was afterwards when my pain relief had worn off. And I also had a slight graze down there as well. Um, and that stung a lot. Um, another thing kind of linking into this point, the first P after labour, that will sting. <laughs> like nobody's business, that will sting. Um, so maybe get a peri bottle. I didn't have one of these and it's something I really wish I had and if we have another baby I will be packing one in my next hospital bag. Ten, this is the last thing that I wish I knew before my labour and delivery. It's how much euphoria you actually feel once you've had your baby. As soon as you've given birth and that baby is put on your chest, how you feel no other feeling in the world what is the complete and utter euphoria you you know you're high on so much adrenaline you might be a bit shaky but none of it matters once you hold that baby and you have them on your chest you know I think that's part of the reason why all the pain goes away because you're just looking down at them in absolute awe and thinking I made you you know I've grown you in my body for nine months I've nourished you I've made you safe and now you're here I have to do that all again <laughs> but I have to do it from me not from the placenta or the umbilical cord I have to do it from me that is the most fulfilling part about it and you know over 10 months later it's hard being a parent but you wouldn't change any of it and in that moment, you're, you're just so filled with emotions, but, you know, you're emotional, you're crying, but it's all from happiness, you know, you finally have your baby in your arms. And if you are pregnant watching this, I hope that all of this has kind of prepared you for what labour and delivery may be like. Every woman's experience is different, so do not take my experience and think, my experience is going to be exactly the same as that because it probably won't be. I hope that your labour and your delivery goes well and I hope you have your babies in your arms very soon. So that is the end of, I don't want to say episode, but that is the end of the first video of the Things I Wish I Knew Thursday <laughs> series. <laughs> so if you have enjoyed it then don't forget to subscribe or hit the like button or ring the bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.